Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. Uh, about a month ago, I did a review on a new to the market solar generator at my off-grid shop here. That means I have no power hooked up to it. And in that video I released, I got a number of comments telling me I should have tried a Blue Yeti or Blue Eddy solar generator power station. So when that manufacturer reached out to me to see if I was interested in taking a look at their product, I said, sure, why not? I got to respect my viewers' opinions. So I just picked up this Blue Eddy uh, portable power station. This is the AC200 Max, and we're going to take a look at it. Now, a lot of people, including myself, call these uh, solar generators, uh, almost to compare them to an actual generator that runs off of fuel to make 110 power. So these generators make electricity burning chemical energy and converting that into power. The generators themselves don't store power, they just generate power. As soon as they turn off, they aren't making power anymore. But it is a little bit of a misnomer because it does not just generate power from the sun, but they can also store power and release it quietly, unlike a loud generator. What we're gonna do first is unbox it, we'll take a look at its physical capabilities, what it looks like, how it operates. I'll probably go through it and see what I like about it, what I don't like about it, and then we'll try to see it in action. Now what we won't really probably do is compare this to uh, other units out there because I am not much of a numbers man and I don't have the patience to run continuous tests between all different units at all the time. And because they are an all-in-one power station, I think they really are the future of off-grid living, tiny homes, cabins, uh, van life, uh, even other small RV conversions. But of course our applications don't end with a cabin, off-grid, or even RV life. Uh, I go to a lot of uh, trade conventions and uh, Comic Con conventions, and a lot of times you'll be set up at a table and you won't have any power. So it's very nice to have a power station with you. But because you can so easily set up a complete off-grid uh, power system, you can actually start augmenting power in your own house, either as, by having an emergency power backup for whenever your grid was to lose power, or if you just wanted to have a dedicated free power system within a room of your house for either heating, air conditioning, or even computers without being tied into the grid. It can be completely isolated. And so you can effectively create a free power grid to run uh, limited loads within your house and not have to worry about the price of it reflected on your bill. But I guess enough of my talking. Let's go ahead and unbox this thing. So right here we have a bag. I assume it's gonna be uh, some cords. And then this is a little bit disturbing. I thought it was going to be all in one, but this is... All right, looks like you hook up 110 power to this. So we'll see how that works. So it's not completely all in one, self-contained. We'll get the owner's manual. I will say it does look like it was boxed very well. That's good to hear. And let's go ahead and get this thing open. Now the first thing we want to know is, it's called a portable power station, but how portable is it? That is to say, how heavy is it? All right, let's get the uh, scale turned on right there. And we're zeroed out. So let's find out. Now I can lift it up with one hand. And let's see, it says 27.9 kilograms. Let's choose to, uh, all right, 62 pounds basically. So not incredibly light, a little bit heavier than a bag of cement. But because it does have the two handles in there, it is fairly portable. I will say there's no wheels underneath. And I can carry it with one hand. And that's my weak left hand, so it's not too bad. But the overall construction does look pretty good. It doesn't have hard corners on it. See underneath, it does have some anti-skid, anti-marring feet on it. Okay, so overall, pretty solid build. It almost looks like one of those uh, contractor's radios when uh, houses are being built. Which is another good application of uh, these off-grid power systems. Let me just get a tape measure out right here. It's about 15 inches tall, about 16 inches wide, and 10 inches deep. So not a perfect, so not a perfect cube, but a pretty good form factor. Now the first thing I'm noticing is that it has a uh, wireless charging for phones on the top, which I didn't expect. That's a pretty nice feature because you're gonna put stuff on the top of this thing anyways, right? So we just 
go ahead and do wireless phone charging up there and there's spots for two of them. So that's a pretty neat feature to already have built into it. So I haven't read the instructions yet, but if we were to look at the side of this, that's obviously the power button. It looks like we have 110 output here. So those are 120 volt, we have four of them. A 30 amp RV outlet, but that's probably not rated for 30 amp. Yeah, 2200 watts. So that's gonna be about 18 amps total, maybe 20 amps. Whereas these are rated at 2000 watts. So that's about 16 amps. I don't know what peak is. I don't know what surge is gonna be on this. I haven't read any of that. There's two USB A three amp outlets, two USB A 18 watt outlets. That's weird. This one's in wattage, that one's in amperage. Yeah, whatever. A USB C, they're calling that 100 watts. Uh, I'm thinking this is likely 12 volt output within a 12 volt cigarette outlet right here rated at 10 amps and a 12 volt DC at 30 amp. I think I'm gonna be happy with that. I assume this is all outputs right here. And then on the side here we have a cooling fan. This one, oh yeah, that's right. So this can be, uh, you can add two more battery modules to this. Now I didn't get the modules, but, but uh, the battery that's built into this is 2048 watt hours. I think it's uh, actually a lithium iron phosphate chemistry. And with these two ports right there, you can add two more battery uh, extensions or modules. So you can triple the size of the battery capacity on this one with those outlets right there. Uh, this one right here, it says adapter. I think that's how you're gonna charge it when it's plugged into power. I'm guessing that's what this is. This is uh, the power, this is a power converter or a power supply to charge the onboard battery here. So let's see if that fits. Yeah, so I think that's how that's gonna work. And then this right here, these are both labeled input. Assume, let's see, this is DC input. So this is likely uh, how you're gonna charge it up using solar. Might be time to open up the bag to see what kind of adapters and plugs they gave me. That's a fancy little nylon bag they gave you with the drawstring. All right, so here's all the cables it comes with. This one looks like it's going to go to the power chargers, power supply right there. You have this one, which is a cigarette adapter with a, I think those are called XT90 connectors. We have a solar adapter. It looks like it still has that XT90 adapter on there. And then that 12 volt pin. Let's see, so that's the same color code right there. But that XT90 connector again. All right, so that's the cables it came with. And let's uh, continue looking on the outside of it. This around, you're just gonna see data plate right there. It gives you all the capacities and information coming in. So yeah, those were the outputs on the front of it. On this side, there's gonna be another cooling fan. So overall, it looks like a pretty robust construction on it. Could I carry this thing 100 yards? Probably after that, I'd probably wanna have a uh, hand cart or some sort of dolly or a second person to help me carry it around. That's quite a distance to carry it after that point. Other than that, each one of them has this rubberized uh, dust cover on them. Uh, we'll probably talk more about this later. And then that's gonna be the power button. So let's go ahead and turn it on and see what happens. Blue Eddy. Initializing. So looks like we're at 84% charge right now. If we go to the settings. Oh, look at that. You can change it from 60 hertz to 50 hertz. So that, that's pretty good for non-American users. And you can change it to the language. Uh, I'm not sure what eco mode is. Uh, Bluetooth connectivity uh, and then you can do a little bit more of uh, setups there oh, looks like you can do the brightness of sprite the screen up a little bit all right there we go as bright as we can all right so like a lot of these you have to turn on the power so all these would be turned off right now until I turned on the DC which will be all of these connections right there and then that would turn on the AC on this side but so far, it looks like a pretty easy plug and play all in one system. You don't have to be smart in order to operate this even a little bit or even understand how it works. It's just a magical box with everything in it. All right, so what do we have here is an onboard battery. Uh, it's a lithium iron phosphate battery. It's, so it's rated at 2048 watt hours. 
Uh, I think that equates to about 166 amp hours. It's a very strange way for me to understand this. Like I said, I'm not much of a uh, numbers guy. Uh, every time people explain amp hours to me, it makes sense. And then uh, five seconds later, I don't understand it at all anymore. But I think that means it could run one amp for 166 hours. Uh, two amps for 83 hours and so on. Though I'm sure like most things, it's not a complete linear relationship and it starts to uh, have a curve to some sort of graph somewhere because I'm not smart enough to understand that. But let's see how to charge this thing because it does have that battery and we do need to charge it up. It does not just sit there and make power, which is where these two input uh, facilities come into play. I think I understand what they're trying to do, but let's go ahead and take a look at the owner's manual. You can plug the power supply in there to charge it up. Uh, you can hook up the solar. Now this says, it says the max input uh, current of solar charging is 15 amps, all right? Or 15.2 or 15 and a half, depending on your plus and minus there. Anything more than that will be wasted. Now, um, believe me when I say numbers do not excite me whatsoever. If you really want to understand any of the charge capacities or any of the real numbers, uh, if you want to understand these solar generators as substantially on a technical level, I would probably recommend you check Will Prowse. He does, he explains all this stuff much better than I will ever help to do. So I'm not completely sure how big of an array you can hook up to this thing. But for most people, they're going to have probably a 100 or 150 watt panel, maybe a 200 watt panel at the most in a more portable setting. But we'll try that out and take a look and see what we got. I think it does have a built-in MPP charge controller, which is again why this is nice because it's an all-in-one package as far as you don't have to go get a charge controller, a battery, wiring, overcurrent protection. It's all in this box already. I say that, but uh, the charge for the uh, 110, you do have to plug in. It doesn't have the charger built into it. We'll touch on that again later. It's a neat little feature too, because now you can uh, do a reverse charge to it. So you can actually hook it up to a cigarette lighter. These two adapters right here, plug in that and then plug in here and you can charge it up from a vehicle. So it's really perfect for van life because uh, you don't have to run wires to it. You could just plug it into the cigarette lighter in a van or a car. Well, they tout that you can hook up a generator to it. I mean, is that really impressive? Because generators provide providing 110 power just like the power company is over here. Looks like you can also connect it to a lead acid battery, but that would be about the most inefficient way I could ever imagine of charging up a lithium battery is with a lead acid battery. 110, solar, car, or lead acid. So I guess they've given you a lot of different options to be able to charge this thing. And this last page will show you where you can get different uh, battery modules to plug in to extend or triple to uh, double or even triple the uh, uh, capacity of uh, the power station right there. And then the last thing I was able to try was that they do have an app for this. But I did download it right here, so you hook it up to uh, Bluetooth. Let me go back. All right, so we are connected. So what I did like about this app, it was very intuitive and very easy to download. You did not have to register with uh, the manufacturer in order to actually use the app at all. But right here, you're gonna have the exact same features that you would have on the touch screen right there, but from a remote facility. So I can turn the DC off and the AC off using the app. It'll show the power coming in and how it's being used. Let's go ahead and uh, get this thing set up and see what we think of it. So the first thing I want to do is try the uh, solar charger, but I don't think there's anything better than using free power from the sun. That's quiet too. Two panels set up right here. These are just a, a 335 watt panel and a 325 watt panel. I know it's not best to mix panels like this, but that's where we're at because that's what I have. So this is obviously a very primitive and impromptu uh, array I've put together. You see the voltage is coming out of this panel right here. Uh, open circuit voltage is 40 volts. 40 volts on this one too. So it's not an ideal situation to mix and match panels like this, but it'll be a good real world test. And I did just look again. So open circuit voltage, uh, 10 volts to 145 volts. So we should be fine putting it in series too. Let's take this uh, cannon plug right here. That dust cap's already annoying me. Okay, tighten that up. We have the adapter cable right here, and excuse me if I'm unimpressed by the uh, thickness of these wires. I would say that would be the biggest limitation so far. Right, so that's connected. I'm gonna go series on it, so let's see. Let's put those together. It's gonna be the two of them put together. 
So it's going to be MC4 connectors. Kind of can't plug them in wrong because of the way they're set up. Okay, let's see what we got going on here. All right, so we are coming up with uh, 280 watts. Might be easier to see on the phone here. Now my big question is, can I use power and create power at the same time? That is to say, can I charge the battery and discharge it at the same time? All right, so I did clean up the panels a little bit more. They were pretty dusty. I got an assortment of different loads we can try out on this thing. And so now we're getting close to 300 watts. So let me just put the simplest load you can put on a system because this is going to take a DC a battery power and turn it into 110 power, which is why I really like these things. There, turn the AC on right there. Answer's pretty quick here, so let's turn it on the fan. All right. That's not much of a load on it. But it does say power's coming in and power's coming out. So we are charging as we are using power. Let's put a bigger load on it. So now I have a toaster. We'll plug in the toaster here. All right, now we got 188. Oh, look at that. We're going up. 800 watts. So let's do this and see how fast the battery depletes as we're charging it and using the toaster at the same time. So far, the battery hasn't done much. Let's see if I go to battery pack, see what's happening. So it is discharge. These are going to be the other two battery packs that I don't have hooked up to it. Man, that's holding pretty good. So I do like to see that you can make power while you're using power. That's important to know, especially on a solar setup. Okay, you can see how red the coils are there. Go ahead and try a space heater, right? Because the space heater by itself will probably use enough power to trip the system. So I'll turn it on. That's just going to be the fan. That's not heat. Oh wait, never mind. That is heat. Put on low. So now we're using 1,500 kilowatts. We're only putting uh, 300 back in, so that it is going down. The toaster still hasn't popped yet. The fan on this did turn on so we are working it pretty well i'm pretty impressed so far guys we got a space heater going a toaster going a fan going uh basically an entire kitchen and heating setup in a tiny home van or uh ooh, we just made toast so we're kicking back down and we've only lost one percent of the battery let me go ahead and disconnect one of the panels right out here and see if that affects anything at all so i'm gonna go ahead i don't know if it's a safe thing to do or not so i'm gonna go ahead and unplug the solar while I mess with it and let's see they're not charging anymore and battery's going down pretty fast without the uh, solar hooked up to it all right so I disconnected the 325 watt panel and I'll just plug in the 335 and maybe my angle isn't perfect I do have it propped up a little bit I'm not casting too much shade over here sun is sitting Right about 9 o'clock here right now. Now I can plug this back in. And keep in mind, everything's still running over here. Toaster hasn't popped again. Alright. Yeah, it, it was definitely using both those panels. We're, we're down to half the amount of wattage coming out of it. So it does make me wonder if we can hook up another panel. And luckily, I think I still have one more back here. And it's 330 watts, so very similar. Of course, these aren't nearly as portable. You probably want to have portable panels if you're going to do this on the go. All right, the fan and the space heater is still running. We're at 79% on the battery. And I have that one hooked up to that one hooked up to this one. So we're all in series. I did want to check my open circuit voltage here. So I don't want anybody to get upset with me that I'm putting too many volts to it. So we're just at 116 volts. I think it was set up for 140, so we're good. 145. All right, let's see what we got coming up here. We're going in excess of about 500 watts, huh? That's not too bad, because we're still not even at uh, peak sun use yet. The uh, peak would be right above. 
We're still discharging more than we're charging, but that's still pretty impressive we can do that. My next question would be, can we charge with solar and 110 at the same time? Even though I have power lines back here, I don't have any power in the shop. I'm just gonna go ahead and plug it into my RV right there and turn on the generator. So not nearly as quiet as a solar panel, but I got it plugged in right there with an extension cord. All right, so we're still at 78%. That's not too bad. I kind of wish there was a switch to turn this thing on or off. For whatever reason, I don't like plugging things in without having a disconnect. We got a green light. I assume that's something. Let's see. All right, all right. So it can charge from the grid and solar at the same time. So now we should be putting out an excess of uh, what we're using. So if I were to go to the battery pack, let's see what it's saying. It says status standby. I don't know what really that means. Let me run this for a little bit and see if the battery voltage comes up. So we still have the fan going and the uh, space heater going. All right, well, I've been letting it run for a little bit here. We're still at 78% and the battery pack still says it's uh, and standby. So I don't think it's trying to charge the battery. We're just having the inverter making power and passing it through and not charging the battery. Which is kind of weird too, because this means this, this 110 power coming in turns it into 58 volts at eight amps coming out, but that's 58 volts DC. And that DC, instead of going to the battery, is getting turned right back into a 110 power uh, to go to the space heater and the outlets out here. So uh, we'll talk more about that later. So if I go ahead and go back here and we turn off the AC output, all right? So that turned off, fan turned off, our load turned off. We got a battery pack. Now it is charging. Okay. It looks like it, honestly, it's charging the same from, uh, almost the same from solar as from the grid. So that's not too bad. That means uh, if you were able to find somewhere where you had your solar panels in full sun and only a 15 amp outlet, you can charge this thing pretty well and pretty fast using both uh, power sources. Of course, the downside being that uh, you're not charging the battery if you're using loads at the same time. But it's only been about three minutes and we're already up to 79%. So it is charging pretty fast. And, uh, and our wattage is going up as the uh, sun starts moving a little bit across the sky. Again, very, very crude setup on my panels there. Let's try one more appliance and see how it handles an induction stove top here. All right, this is the hot plate. Let's pour some water into it. All right, I think this induction capable pot here. If not, I know my pan is. Let's go ahead. 275, we'll do 300. Let's start. So let's see our wattage is coming up. Look at that, we're already starting to boil a little bit. Let's kick it up to high. Ooh, I can see the wire, water already changing. And we're using 1300 watts. All right. Our power coming in from solar's going up too. Go back to power pack. It's discharging the battery. So it's making up some differences by using the battery on board. So it is going down now too. So that's pretty interesting. So it's no longer in standby mode, it's in uh, discharge mode. So we're using solar, uh, 110 coming in, and the battery, just because we're using so much. And we're about boiling here. And kind of why, why I'm a big fan of these uh, self-contained power stations right here is, uh, I didn't have to make a uh, battery distribution center uh, with a whole bunch of different uh, circuits and wiring. I didn't have to make a 110 system with a whole bunch of breakers coming in and out. I basically have a self-contained house right here and I have an outside kitchen I'm cooking uh, water on. I could still turn on a space heater. I have a toaster and even a fan that I could turn on right there. So the water is boiling. Maybe I should put some more water in there before I boil it all away. Let's go ahead and try to play with fire here. I'll turn the toaster on. All right, we're maxed out on these outlets right here at 2,000 watts. And it still hasn't kicked yet. 
if I wanted to, I could get an adapter to go to the 30 amp plug there, which isn't really 30 amp, it's just 2200 watts. So 30 amp would be about 3600 watts. But we're still cooking here. Still got the toaster going. Still got that fan going. Uh, batteries come down 79%. So this is actually going really well. And if you notice, if I wanted to, I could just have a tablet or a phone just on the wall somewhere, even remotely setting. So I wouldn't. Even, this could be uh, down underneath a cabinet somewhere. Plugs already plugged into it as a distribution center. This really is pretty much what you need for tiny home living or van life. No propane anymore. Do we tempt fate, guys? I'm going to tempt fate. I'm going to unplug this and say we lost power. All right. So now we only have 528 watts coming from panel. We're still discharging. It didn't trip anything. And this is still working. Wow. Look at that. You can make toast, make soup, uh, cook eggs, and still have ventilation all off the power of the sun and your stored energy. All right, let's stop boiling this water now. Ran that just fine. We're down to 70%. I plugged it back in. Now we go back to battery. It is charging. Yeah, we're doing good. Now, of course, the other way we can charge is with a cigarette lighter on a car. Now, my Prius might be the best pickup truck I've ever had, but I'm not confident the 12 volt outlet on it is what I want to test it with. So let's get a little bit more a real life application. Even though I have watched and I'm a big fan of people that live in Toyota Priuses, and that would probably work for them too. All right, so I got my truck set up right here. Let me get it hooked up. Go ahead and unplug the solar panels. All right, I couldn't probably get my truck close enough, so I got an extension cable over here. Now, before I hook this up, it did say to switch the uh, power setting on the DC charge side. Uh, I went to the setup here, and the only setting I had was auto sleep. Uh, on the DC side, I don't see any uh, other setups. So I'm going to have to go through here. Now, this screen is very responsive. It's a little bit harder to see in the sun but it says DC input source PV other. So I'm gonna move that to other. Now I can plug this in. All right, so I turn the AC off. I have 55 uh, watts coming in from my cigarette lighter. I did have to move it because this is a Ford. My cigarette lighter down there is a little bit uh, inter intermittent. The one up there, that power point's a little bit better. So 54 watts. If there's a direct correlation between what's coming in and out, I don't really know. If at 5,500 watt or 55 watts, we divide by 13 volts. It says it's only drawing about four amps, so I don't know. A little bit less than I would expect, but I, there's got to be power loss. So converting this into, I would guess it's a 48 volt battery on there. So I'm sure there is some loss up uh, converting 12 volt into 48 volt. Now, I can't deny it would take an awful long time to charge uh, this battery at 55 watts. Now, I'm not a solar channel. Uh, I'm an RV channel, and I know the number one question I care about, and probably all my viewers care about is, will it run a roof AC? Now, I don't have anything here that I can really run it off of, so let me just go across town real fast, and we'll see if we can't find something. All right, so we're going to try a few coaches out here at Casone's RV, starting with this little tiny uh, clipper. A pop-up teardrop like this clipper is what uh, this uh, system would be perfect for. Because it does have 30 amp service to it. There's no roof AC. But it does have a built-in window AC unit over here. Alright, so we got it popped up right here. It's basically a one-person or two-person little pop-up teardrop trailer. But we'll plug it in and see if we can get the AC going. Now, of course, this guy isn't waterproof, so you wouldn't want to leave it outside on the ground. And you wouldn't want somebody to take it from you. And we'll go inside so we can use the app to control it from the inside. All right, so let me go ahead and turn the AC on. Go ahead and turn the AC on, all right, we got power. Technically, we are using the battery charger down here, but look at that, the AC's on. But I do have cold air coming out right here. I didn't think this would be much of a uh, problem for it, and we do have a refrigerator right here, and it's running off of it too. So let me go ahead and turn the refrigerator off. So there you go, I turned it off. And I'll turn the refrigerator on. So I have a refrigerator, 
and AC going, running strictly off AC 200 Max from Blue Eddy. Uh, it's pretty cool. All right, so it's probably been running for about five minutes now. Let's see, I got here. Let's see what we have 53 degrees coming out, which is, I guess, about 14 Celsius. Yeah, even colder. About 20 degrees Celsius. 67 degrees so I got 44 so it's definitely cooling so we already saw that with the solar panels hooked up we were putting out about 750 watts of power now it wasn't charging the battery but that means we could be running the AC and the refrigerator all day in full Sun and not use any battery power and then save that for the night all right so that one was pretty simple let's go ahead and turn it off 76 watts which is likely the uh, power charger or the battery charger so yeah i turn off that breaker that goes with the battery charge it's supposed to be charging the battery up front there but with this system you wouldn't need that anymore because you could use the 12 volt uh 30 amp outlet right there and then run everything inside there off the 12 using this as a house battery too so you would eliminate the battery in the front you wouldn't have to worry about maintaining that anybody stealing that and you could probably even rig something up underneath the bed right there to actually house the uh, AC 200 Max uh, Blue Eddy. But that was a simple one. Let's try a normal roof AC on an RV. I don't think it's fair to hook up this 2200 watt power station to a 50 amp coach. So I'm going to try to find a 30 amp coach to kind of give it a fighting chance. So we have this Villaggio by Renegade. Now it still has traditional wet cell lead acid batteries right here. Look like group 27 steep cycles. There's two of them. It's about 400 and some odd dollars there and it's got a marine style plug on it but it is 30 amp let me go ahead and plug this thing in 30 amp service 110 plug this in here We're good let's go inside now this is just a class c type motorhome but it's a mini motorhome built on a Sprinter Mercedes chassis. There's no bunk. So a pretty good test for van life. Now I do not really expect it to run the roof AC as is because the roof AC requires at least 40 amps on the surge in order to get it started on the compressor side. So let me just make sure that the uh, that's turned off. Now we can get out our control. Do our remote. Let's turn the AC on. All right. All right, so currently I'm drawing already about a kilowatt of power. Uh, not really have anything going on. I'm sure it's the battery charger that's sucking our power down, charging up those house batteries. So let's go ahead and turn the converter off. I had to turn the converter off down there because that's a 110 appliance that takes battery that takes 110 power and converts it as a battery charger to charge those two house batteries down below. So it's very inefficient to use stored battery power to turn into 110 power to turn it back into 12 volt power to charge up the other battery so i just turned that system off and yeah we're already down to zero watts so now i should be able to turn the microwave on yeah we're doing good so the microwave working just fine off the blue eddy power station oh look at that we're done so Microwave ran for a minute just fine and we did use about 2% of the battery to, to do that. Now it's uh, bright as can be outside so I've had solar hooked up. Uh, if, we got true for, if we got true 900 watts out of it, probably would have only used uh, a couple hundred watts out of that system. So we would have been fine because we've been producing 900 watts using about 1400 watts. So for that minute we wouldn't, wouldn't really use too much uh, battery power. But let's go ahead and try the important thing. So all right. So we're not using anything currently. Now I can turn the fan, the ceiling fan on, right? That's uh, the AC fan only, the compressor's not running. It's only using 175 watts on high. If I move it to low, we do drop down to uh, 100 watts. But this is what I imagine is gonna happen. I'm gonna turn on the compressor and we're gonna lose power because it's gonna go over current and it's gonna trip the, uh, the AC output. So let me go ahead and uh, set it to uh, 69 degrees. 
And I'm gonna give it a fighting chance with the fan already running so it doesn't have to start up two things at once. But go ahead and turn that on. So cool mode. And look at that, it turned off. As I suspected, it could not handle the surge load of the compressor. And it turned off the uh, AC output. So I am curious about one thing because I'm really not a solar or off-grid channel. I'm mostly an RV channel. I want to know if we can make that thing run off of this power system. And there's one thing that we can try first. So this is what's known as a soft start. So instead of uh, starting the compressor with full surge uh, amperage, uh, a lot of uh, people are using these as a soft start that ramps up the compressor slowly. So that surge uh, amperage goes down, the surge wattage goes down, and so you can get away with uh, running a roof AC off a 2,000 or 2,500 watt uh, generator and so that's what most people are using so I'm gonna try this to see if we can hack this, this blue eddy uh, solar generator to run our RV roof AC off of battery power only most roof ACs only really require about 18 amps in the heat of the day to actually stay running it's just the surge amperage that kills you and that outlet is rated at 2200 watts now this is not a video about installing a soft start a soft start uh, I did pick it up from e trailer but let me go ahead and get that installed in the Roof AC, I have to get on the roof to do this, and then we're gonna try it again. Basically on this AC, we're gonna be uh, removing the hard start capacitors and installing this device in series with it. And they're gonna live right about here. And this is just gonna be a temporary installation because this is just for scientific purposes. All right, so there's the capacitors right there. Let me just get this thing wired up to make it make sense and then we'll give it a shot. All right, now please feel free not to follow this uh, instructions, all right? This is just a temporary setting because I'm gonna take this back out again. Turn the AC back on. All right, so we have power again, microwave on. If I turn the fan on, okay. So 180 watts. Now if we go ahead and turn the compressor on, we'll set the drop down down. And let's see what happens. I just heard it click. Look at that ramping up. And look at that. It didn't turn off. 115. All right, 1500 watts. And I can tell you this is nice and cold. Let's go on the outside and see what the compressor says. Green light is on. I can hear the compressor running. I know, I'm not gonna leave the wires like that. I'm taking it back out. Still, we dropped down to 1400 watts. So, 80 degrees going in. 58, I saw 58 for a second. I'm calling that success. So, yes, you can use the uh, AC200 Max from Blue Eddy with the soft start on a roof AC, on an RV, and then it'll work. I know a lot of people will say, well, we're using 1500 watts, so it won't last forever. And we have used quite a bit of power. And if we had solar coming in, let's say we had 900 watts, we'd still be using about 400 watts of uh, the battery coming out of it. I know it's not ideal, it's just very interesting that we could do that. And I wonder if we had uh, two more uh, battery modules, if we'd uh, honestly be able to run it for an entire day. So that's pretty interesting news to know. Now I just have to take everything apart. I'll meet you back at the shop. All right, so let's get down to the nitty gritty. What do I like about the AC200 Max uh, power station from Blue Yeti? Or Blue Eddy, I'm sorry about that. It's actually built very well. It's fairly quiet. It has good access and a lot of good outputs on it. I do like that you can charge with both solar and 110 or grid power at the same time, or even a cigarette lighter on a car. It does make it very easy to hook up to an RV with the 110 or with the 30 amp outlet right there. And having the bonus of uh, wireless charging for your phone on top, very nice. Having a pretty powerful MPP charge controller built in has been very impressive to me too. Sun's moved a little bit more and now we're putting out almost 700 watts. So that's pretty good. Uh, it's charged up that lithium iron phosphate battery with uh, 248 watt hours of capacity on it, which I'm guessing is about 166 amp hours on it. And I'm also guessing it's about 48 volt system. And I do like how uh, they made uh, one cable multi-purpose. So you can use this to plug into the cigarette lighter and vice versa. 
That is to say, you could plug it in to this outlet right there and run 30 amps out of it to a RV as 12 volt, which is a very useful thing if you're building RVs or if you've ever had an RV. Because 30 amp outlet on 12 volt is almost a more than enough to run everything in a normal towable or even RV with the exception of like a hydraulic pump for a slide out. That means you could basically take the normal 12 volt batteries out of an RV or towable and you don't need them anymore. You could wire it directly up to that 12 volt outlet right there and just put that in the place of the normal 12 volt batteries that you would have right there which is of course why i really like these systems to begin with because i am an rv owner and if there's one thing i do know you're replacing those wet cell batteries almost annually at this point and at 200 dollars a battery those add up really quickly because try as you might as an rv owner you don't use these quite enough to uh prevent those batteries from getting damaged and of course this has that high capacity lithium iron phosphate battery built into it good for thousands of cycles and like i said i'm guessing about 166 amp hours now a standard group 27 rv marine deep cycle battery will have about 100 amp hours of capacity to it so a little bit less as that lithium battery but don't forget with the wet cell lead acid batteries you can only really use half of that capacity before you start damaging the battery so instead of having 100 amps you only have 50 amps Besides making an unholy mess everywhere when it spills or boils over, this by itself weighs 55 pounds. So the AC200 Max doesn't even weigh 10 pounds more than just one of these batteries. And if I did my math correctly, 166 amp hours on that one battery, uh, 100 amps on the one group 27 battery but you only really use 50 of it so you take three normal group 27 batteries to match the performance of a one of these so that's where you start getting into price comparison to buy a high quality lithium iron phosphate battery you're looking about eight to nine hundred dollars just for that by itself or to buy three group 27 lead acid batteries I'm gonna guess about $200 a piece, that's $600. So the AC200 Max Blue Eddy, the price is about $1,600. So you're really only half the cost in batteries already just by buying this. And you don't have to buy a solar charge controller, all the wiring, the disconnects, the fuses, the inverter. This inverter by itself is gonna cost nearly the same amount as that entire unit. And then of course, any accessories like remote panels and uh, wireless control options. So those are the things that I do like about it and why I think that these portable power stations are pretty much going to be the future, especially when uh, gasoline generators are going to be phased out anyway. So might as well have these ready to go. And it's, it's out of the box. You didn't have to do anything. But what don't I like about it? I'll tell you. The first thing would be up here. Yeah, it's nice having wireless uh, phone charger, but there's no grip to it. There's no lip to it. So these will just move around very really easily. If you bump and they'll fall off and then you damage your phone. So they could have put an anti-skid rubberized coating on that. Uh, these little rubber dust covers, uh, they're kind of frustrating. They get in the way. They're just gonna tear and break over time. So I'm not a big fan of these either. Uh, not even a little bit. Nah. It's very frustrating to plug things in with that. Now, while it's only 62 pounds, uh, not much lighter than a battery over here. It's still kind of awkward for one person to, to move around. It would have liked to have had wheels on it or some way to move it a lot easier. But I think the number one thing that I don't like about it is going to be right there. I don't know if they were going for form over function completely, but it is not fully self-contained. The battery charger that hooks up to the grid uh, is external. This is kind of heavy. It's kind of bulky. And the worst thing about it is... If you don't have this, you can't charge this up fast with uh, grid power. But that's not even the worst thing. Because that's a power supply that takes grid power, turns it into DC voltage, I think from around 58 volts DC. You don't truly really have a 110 pass through, so you can't hook up 110 through here and just pass it through and use the uh, AC200 Max Blue Eddy as a power backup. So it just doesn't have power going through it like you would on one of these standalone inverter chargers. So if you did want to use this for a power backup situation with the refrigerator, yeah, it might work if, as long as your refrigerator doesn't exceed uh, the power output that this can make. But it's also pretty wasteful to take 110 power, turn it to DC power, so you can charge the battery and invert it back into 110 power to charge your, or to operate your refrigerator. 
But one thing I do want to add is not only is that standalone charger uh, a little bit more awkward and you don't get the pass through, but it's incredibly loud. So you couldn't hear it because the generator was going and I was outside, but I took it home and I plugged it in and listen to what it sounds like when it's charging. So yeah, that could be quite loud if you're in a small little area. You're gonna have to listen to that. Now the only other thing I didn't like about it, you have a 30 amp outlet right there. And that just exists so that you can hook up an RV to it easily without making any sort of adapter. But it kind of seems a little bit uh, sneaky because you don't have 30 amps coming out from this. You cannot run everything in an RV with that plug. But you can plug in, watch TV, use the microwave. So there it was guys, my review of the uh, AC 200 Max Blue Eddy power station. Like I said, I really think this is going to be the future for RVing. Thanks a lot for watching guys. This has been fun, but also exhausting. Bye. I'm sure they gave me some sort of affiliate link. If they did, I'll put it in the description. I won't worry about putting a link to it in the screen or in the, in the video here.